I'm Terry Smart from Chestnut Products and today we'd like to talk about our buffing wheel kit. This is it here, this is the box that it all comes in. So we'll slide it out of there and see what we can come up with. So we open up the box and the first thing that comes out is the instruction leaflet. I wrote this so it does make some sort of sense. So please put it to one side, keep hold of it and do refer to it. It's a great little aid memoir on what you should be doing. Next we have the C wheel that comes out. Uh, all the wheels are labelled and marked so you know exactly which one's which and it tells you on there which compound or which wax to use with them. They're all labelled. Comes fully assembled, has the bolts in there all ready to, let, to mount on the lathe so you're ready to go. Next out comes the B wheel, again fully labelled and marked up, ready to go. And finally we have the A wheel, this one here. They're all slightly different cotton grades and so they're coordinated to work with the various compounds that come with the kit. Then we get down to the bottom of the kit and there you can see all neatly held together in the polystyrene tray various items. And the most important one is this one here, the large mandrel, and that's what holds the wheels into the chuck. These are made in the UK and they're zinc plated as well, so they should last pretty much forever. The only reason you should need to buy another one of these is if you lose it. When it comes in the kit, it does have a little cap on there just to protect the thread. You can take that off, keep it, throw it away, doesn't really matter. Also in the kit, you have the brown and white compounds. Now these are the cutting compounds that you use with the A and B wheel and these are what prepare the wood, get it as smooth as possible, ready for the final buffing with the C wheel. And when you use the C wheel, you'll use the Carnuba stick on it. Again this comes in the kit and it's completely ready to go. And then finally in the kit you get a small version of the mandrel. Now this is designed to fit into a Jacob's chuck, uh, so you can still use it on the lathe if you want, or you can use it on a hand drill. Uh, particularly useful perhaps if you're using a pillar drill as well, or if you want to mount one of the dome buffs into a hand drill. Now it is important to note that the buffing wheel system is a chuck based system. We will need a chuck to hold the mandrel on the lathe. The mandrel is stepped at 18 and 25 mil, so either section can be inserted into the chuck. As long as you've got a firm grip on there, that's absolutely fine. If you hold it on the 18 mil section, you get a longer extension away from the chuck, gives you more room to work with. So that just pops into the centre of the chuck there. Tighten the chuck up and we should be ready to go. If everything's working right, it should self-centre, but if you're having trouble with it, just bring up a live centre, there we go, into the, into the countersunk hole before you do the final squeeze to tighten it up. And if you do that, try and remember to keep the live centre well away from you because they hurt when you catch your hand on them. So we're now ready to put the first wheel in. So this is the A wheel again and I'm using the wheels from my demo kit. As you see I've used these a few times and they do take their own shape after a little while. If you are using a brand new wheel just be prepared for it to shed some loose cottons the first couple of times you use it. That's perfectly normal and nothing to worry about. So the, uh, the wheel just screws into the mandrel like that. Avoid the temptation of starting the lathe up to help the, uh, the wheel screw into the mandrel because if you do that it can grip on there, it can grab it and it can get locked tight and it's very very difficult to get out afterwards. So just hand tight is perfectly suitable. As it says on the front of the uh, label there, on the first wheel we use compound one, the brown compound, that's this one here. Already loaded this one up a little bit. Speed wise I normally have the lathe running at around about 1100 rpm. I feel comfortable at that speed with it and it does the job perfectly well for me. You can go up to 1500 rpm, the wheels are rated for that speed, but anything upwards of 600 rpm will do the job. I'll show you that bit in a minute. So we start the lathe off and we just load the compound onto it. Now when you do that, resist the temptation to put the edge of the compound against the wheel. If you do that, 
it will sharpen it to a point and then when you put that point on the wheel it will just crumble away and be wasted. We always work in the bottom quarter of the wheel. That's the safest place to do it. And just in case you do happen to let go of the, uh, the bowl, it's gonna fly away from you rather than towards you. And we just gently bring the bowl up to the wheel and start the buffing process. Keep it moving. And what we're doing here is mainly about preparation. It's important also to know that the buffing system is designed to be used on a coating. It's not really for bare wood. Now this piece has had finishing oil on it, but you can use it quite happily with any of the lacquers, most of the oils, and even just over a cellulose sanding sealer. It will buff that quite happily. So we'll stop the lathe and you can see there, that's the first part of the process done. We've got a nice shine starting to grow there. There's no wax on there. That's just because we smoothed the woods down so much, we're getting a nice bright finish from it. We're now ready to start using the second wheel. So we'll whiz the first one off. And on goes the B wheel. Again, all marked up so you know exactly which one you're using. Same process again. Whiz that on and we're ready to go. Now with the B wheel, we use the white compound. Now some people refer to this as white diamond and this cuts back at an even finer level. So it gives an ultra fine finish to the surface of your timber. And it also does the job of removing any of the brown bloom that may have been left over from when you first put on the, uh, the, the compound one. Really important with this one. You don't need too much of this. If you put too much on the wheel, it will smear over the surface of your wood and it's an absolute nightmare to get rid of. You'll get there in the end, but prevention is so much better than cure. So still running at the same speed. All I put on is, and that's plenty. You can of course add more if you feel you need to as you go through, but generally speaking, that'll be, that'll be more than enough. And we repeat the process again, still in the bottom quarter of the wheel. and we buff all around the surface. Now all the wheels in our range are unstitched and that means you can, if you want to, turn the speed down. I said anything up as about 600 RPM is absolutely fine. And by turning the speed down, the wheel will deform more. So if you've got a more intricate shape, it will adapt itself to the shape of whatever you're working with. It also means there's less pressure. So if you've got a thin walled item, you won't be pressing against it quite so much and you also won't be generating so much heat. So that will protect what you're working on. It takes a little bit longer, of course, but it still does the job extremely well. Turn the speed back up and we get ready to take the uh, B wheel off and put the C wheel on. Now I mentioned earlier that all of the, uh, the cloth grades in the wheel are slightly different and this is particularly noticeable with the C wheel. It's a much softer, cleaner cotton and this is the one that does the buffing. Now in the kit you get a stick of the carnauba wax and that's what I'm going to use on here. But you can also use the microcrystalline wax in either the stick or the paste form. So we go through the process again. We load up the wheel with a carnauba stick. You don't need too much of this but you can't really overdo it. And then we just do the process one last time. You work your way all the way around the bowl. And that's the job done. So we've got a lovely thin layer of the carnauba wax there, giving us a high degree of protection without being a thick plasticky looking finish. 
Now, if you were using the microcrystalline wax, which is perfectly acceptable, you'd put the wax onto the bowl first, leave it about 15 minutes to dry, and then buff it up using the sea wheel. And you can use the same sea wheel for the uh, microcrystalline wax as you do for the carnauba stick. They're, they're friends, they don't mind sharing. So, hope you've enjoyed that. Hope also that you're gonna like and subscribe to our channel and come back and see us again. Thanks very much. Thank you.